Welcome to Framework Fortune and welcome back Framework Fortune community. I'm your host Ben and it's time for your daily episode of The Last Rip Monday through Friday series where we cover the top stocks in the NASDAQ and NYSC gainers. If you haven't yet, go sign up for the $100 giveaway for the 6k sub celebration for this channel passing 6,000 subs here recently. We appreciate everybody in the community but the link will be in the description below if you haven't signed up yet. Now let's take a look at this market today. The SPY, big sell-off. This is a big drop in the market for one day. I mean, this wasn't even one day. This is like 11 to about 2 or 3 o'clock. It did have a little bit of a rebound, but selling off some more in after hours. If you've ever been to Disney, holding stocks up here, at this 425 high on the straight up move from the stock market over the past year. This looks like the Tower of Terror to me. That's what I would feel like I was on if I'm holding stocks up here. If I've been buying stocks at these highs. This thing is so high it is going to have a pullback. Whether it's going to be a pullback down to this 376 area. Maybe a small pullback down to 400. Or a bigger pullback like we saw last year in March, maybe down to 347 or even 311. I don't know. But at some point, there is going to be a big drop. I'm getting more and more bearish by the day on the stock market. Now, the Fed came out saying a bunch of stuff today. You can see all of these headlines up here if you're looking at the news on the SPY. They're saying they were tapered basically <laughs> when they feel like it. I mean, going through a lot of this, you're just going to be like, wow. Basically, they can't come out and say that we're screwed. If they did that, it would cause panic and the stock market would crash. Powell says by 2023, Fed view that inflation will be higher is related to high employment. And then right here next, you're looking at the economy. It will not have the same degree of fiscal support. Well, if you take all the fiscal support away, all of these quantitative easings, you're going to take the support beams out of this economy because that is the only thing that has been holding it up since the 2008 housing market. And you just go through that. None of this sounds like great stuff. It sounds like he's just like, you know, there's things and stuff. And eh, like I said, I'm very, I am very bearish and getting more bearish by the day. So take it how you want to, you know, do your own due diligence. Just remember I said Tower of Terror. All right, on to the top gainers. So ORPH getting a nice explosion again. That was uh, right after I stopped live stream trading. Actually had a nice little uh, triangle build up or a little U-shape, whatever you want to call it. Breaking that 1150-ish area and then running all the way up to 24 throughout the rest of the day. Had the big rip the other day, a little bit of consolidation above those EMAs and getting some buying volume again. So this is definitely one to keep on watch for tomorrow. Now this is a very interesting one. And the reason I just bit my... <laughs> mm, I'm just looking at the charts. But this one I was talking about in the live stream this morning I really liked as far as the long-term investment. And it was down here at this $4 area. So I was thinking about buying some down here at 4 ish uh, around here after it ripped up a little bit to 585 and now that I'm seeing it's doubled in price since then at nine dollars I'm kicking myself for not doing it earlier. I thought I had more time I didn't know this was gonna start ripping today Alcohol is a pretty good investment So I'm gonna be keeping a very close watch on this and I'll probably do a stock review about it I think it's got a lot of potential and it's pretty undervalued even though I'm bearish on the market Alcohol, even during a recession, is going to sell, if not more so, in a recession. So there's going to be certain nuances like that if we do have a big crash where these type of stocks could hold up. And it was already cheap anyway. AVXL, they posted a study uh, to the clinicaltrials.gov site. It's got a nice little run up. A little bit higher than float, about $70 million. We got an EMA crossover on the five minute about nine o'clock this morning and just pretty much rode out the rest of the way. It did crack a little bit there, but bouncing off the 50 had a little triple bottom there and running up even all the way into 
after hours. So because it's held its gains, it could be one to keep an eye on. Just the other day it ripped to 28.7, so this thing can rip. And it's been on a nice little uptrend. You see the 20 days getting a little ways off that 50 though. So it may consolidate here for a few days before it makes another move. Next we got CTIB. No PR on this one. Just very low float. 4.5 million shares. Got about 4 million in volume. Had nothing going on. And then all of a sudden random pump. Or maybe some random buying from institutions or something not sure but now it's above all emas we could keep an eye on it over the next couple of days especially it being that low float uh the rest of the nasdaq gainers are all very low volume nothing going on even though some of them look like big rips but this is only thirty six thousand in buying this otc stock uh, looks like a hemp company enters into agreement to acquire sacred leaf so you know it's up at 420 and like this little weird candle, and then now it's back down 272, so nothing really there. Okay, so KIN is getting bought up by a bioscience company for $440 million. This is probably the price they're buying per share, and it just went sideways from there. That's usually what happens when you see a buy-up like that. It, if the price is not up to where they're buying it out at, then there's a chance to make some money. But when it just shoots straight up to the price and just goes sideways, there's nothing to do. Uh, GTT, this was one of those ones just hit a recent low. Had a pop the other day, just kind of getting a bounce off of the 50-day after that sell-off. Man, ran about 216 and 299. No news or anything. It does have room up to 370 to that 200-day, so we could see it pop up. ALT had positive results for a drug loss candidate. It had a nice pop up today. It looks like it's making a very big triangle on the daily chart. If this can break over 20, it could get going back up to 25, uh, maybe even 30. So ALT is one to keep an eye on. Uh, RUN, Morgan Stanley maintained overweight rating. As I said before, those really don't mean anything, but they do bring in some buying sometimes. Had a little crossover in the 5 minute there, 20 crossing the 200, went from 44 up to 49 and then on after hours at 5041, but got major resistance right here at 52, so I don't know, that probably is not going to do much unless it has some, some big PR. SPI had a big rip in pre-market and just dumped the rest of the day. This was one I was watching this morning. They're starting to sell EV charging products in the U.S., so I thought that was going to continue to get some hype, but it never did. Now on the daily, it is above all EMAs, and you have the 20-day getting ready to cross the 100 and the 50 getting ready to cross the 200. So we could see some bullish moves coming out of this. I still think we're going to see another hot EV market for a little bit. So this could be one to keep on watch. GEO getting another pop-up after it had had the big pop-up to 11 the other day. Just basically sold off for a few days came down to the 50 and getting a bounce off of that 50 day uh, just bullish pretty much from market open straight up until it just sold off kind of sideways didn't really drop very much held its gains at 100 days right there at seven so strong support at seven could be one to keep an eye on as this has been running lately opt i don't see any news on this just kind of a random spike a big spike though nine dollars up to 16.23 got halted on the way up multiple times uh, just looks like we had this low a year the other day but even on the daily of this thing it doesn't have a lot of volume hardly so basically any buying volume that comes in this is just going to push it up but sold off right back down gave most of its gains back so it's not really a healthy move fuv this one of those consumer discretionary stocks uh, I've been having a climb up. It was up to 18 almost the other day. Sold off. And it's bouncing off that 100-day moving average. Getting a nice move there. Crossing over on the 5-minute. Uh, all the EMAs. And actually by the end of the day, the EMAs were where they were supposed to be. And it ripped even more in the after hour. So this could be one to keep a watch on for tomorrow or Friday. And then GBS. Nothing really on this no news or anything didn't even have volume this morning just getting some random buying in there and then really took off in power hour up to over five since sold off a little bit but looks like it may test five again that hundred days right there around five as well it's a downtrending stock so today i traded apre 
they had some good PR, positive results for a leukemia treatment. And the other part that I liked about it was it had a huge gap to fill. So looking at this daily chart, there's just this big hole right through here where there's no resistance or support lines back through here. So this could easily fill this gap up to 19. And I still think it might. It got a nice pop today. I got in right here, you can see, and it pushed up to 780. And it came back down to that 20 day, so I added to it just five more shares. And it held it for the 20 day to hold, but the 20 day started cracking and I had to get out, took the little loss there, and just sold off the rest of the day. But like I said, this has a lot of potential because of this gap. The only real resistance we have is right there at 1171 with the 200 day. SPCB, one of my swings, got a $4 million contract, didn't do much. <laughs> got a quick spike in pre market up to 158, then sold off. I'm down just a little bit. It's at 138. I'm in at 149. So I'm just going to hold it as long as that 20 days above the EMAs, and we should see it start to curl up some. If it drops down any more than it has today, though, I'm getting out. And I'm also holding ESNV. Keeps getting held up at this 100 day. 20 day just started crossing the 50 the other day. It's riding right along the top of it. Got resistance at 166. So I'm looking for that to break out. And then maybe see this up to the 200 day at $2. But my number one watch out of everything right now is Vino, V-I-N-O. I'm pretty bullish on South American economies right now. A lot of them have went through some rough times in the past 40, 50 years. They are starting to embrace more free market principles. El Salvador just making Bitcoin its legal currency, its legal tender. It used to have the U.S. dollar as its tender because they didn't have their own currency. Well, now they've adopted Bitcoin. They no longer have to operate under America's rules if they don't want to because they have their own source of money. Now, I am seeing a lot of top economists saying this was a dumb move. This is going to destroy El Salvador. Well, a lot of those South American countries were destroyed already. And I think adopting a currency like this that no governments have control of is going to bring in a lot of entrepreneurs because if they're not taxing because it's Bitcoin, well, people who like to make money are going to be going there. And people who like to make money have already been moving from North America to South America. There's a lot of expat communities building up down there. So the future is looking pretty good for those countries, especially if they continue to adopt cryptocurrencies. But the big drop today in the SPY is everything's pretty sketchy now so let me know your thoughts about the overall market and vino and south america economies maybe you know some information that i don't know so share that with me in the comments below appreciate everybody joining me remember go sign up for that giveaway link in the description stay safe out there until next time